There are things you just can't miss on the Disney cruise. So we're taking you around the Disney Fantasy and the Disney Wish to show you every single must do. Let's go! A must do that's kind of hard to escape when you arrive on your Disney cruise is getting your family name called out right when you board the ship. Basically, when you walk on board a Disney cruise, a cast member will ask you what your family name is and then they'll call out to the entire atrium, welcome to the Your Name Here family. It's a very fun tradition. It's an exciting way to start the cruise. We like to record ours just because it's a fun memory, but you can also just live in the moment. thing that you absolutely must do when you're on your Disney cruise is take a photo in the atrium. Every single Disney cruise has a different statue of an icon character hanging out and luckily for us it's Cinderella. We do love coming into the atrium when it's not as busy. It's later at night. We do love coming into the atrium when it's less crowded if you want a more grand picture if it's just you by yourself in the atrium. But also check your navigator app because a lot of characters will end up in the atrium at some point most of the cruise. There are also professional photographers with different sets all around the cruise at different times each day so look out for those they do have different photo packages that you can get over at shutters or the different photo pass studios on board remember you do have to purchase any pictures you want on the cruise after you leave they are gone no more so if you want any of those pictures you need to handle that while you are on ship you can't do that after the fact this next one is one that you can only do um, on some of the ships because the Wish does not actually have atrium elevators. Here in on the Disney Fantasy as well as the Disney Dream, there are these beautiful glass wall elevators. Um, two, there are two of these elevators and you can't call them specifically. There's four other elevator options as well, but you should try to catch this one at least once during your cruise because the views are amazing and there's even a special surprise after you pass the glass walls. Yay! <laughs> Disney characters on the wall. I was gonna film the map, but the, you, you look very cute. <laughs> Thank you, Vanna. Um, you do wanna familiar yourself with the elevators on the ship. Um, one, cruise elevators are gonna be a little smaller than your typical elevators, and they are a little slower. Uh, particularly, I've heard this a lot about the Wish. There's three sets of elevators around the ship. There's one in the forward, a midship and aft. I like forgot what the ship was called. Okay, you got aft, you got mid, you got forward. Yeah. You can also take the stairs because sometimes the elevators get a little busy, especially after those deck parties. Or dinner, around or dinner, dinner in the shows. Luckily, at every single elevator, there's one of these maps. So you can come find out where you are and where you need to go. And the maps are oriented correctly so that like, you know you need to go that way if you need to go that way to see Cassie. Do we need to go that way? No, we need to go this way. Okay, we are here at Marceline Market for the Sail Away Buffet. Let's go. And yeah, we do have our bags because you're going to have to carry them. So keep that in mind. So whatever you got with you when you check in, that's what you have for lunch. Well, to preface before we eat for the rest of this video, I'm a monster when I go to cruise buffets because it's just like you can do a little bit of anything. But it looks prettier than I would have thought. So I got um, some orzo with pesto, a lamb chop that apparently they had, potatoes and grilled chicken. All right, my lunch for today, chicken tikka masala with jasmine rice and some pot stickers. It's delicious. I'm very excited for this. Orzo. This is actually surprisingly delightful. It is so creamy and the pesto weirdly tastes kind of fresh. I think I had low expectations because even though it's the Wish, it's still a buffet. No spice. <laughs> We're on a Disney cruise. I yeah. know. I don't know. Overall, really good lunch, really good first meal on the ship. Very excited. Um, would encourage you, as soon as you get on the ship, come eat, because that's what I always do. I mean, honestly, we're really hungry. We're on the ship, it's around one o'clock now, and in my opinion, this is when the perks start. You paid for the food, you might as well start enjoying it as yes. soon as you're able to and really get your money's worth, so sail away. Yes. A major must do on any Disney cruise is getting a free, complimentary, soft serve. Unlimited soft serve. Unlimited. 
unlimited. You can have as much as you want. There are cones, you can go get a cup. You can just have as much soft serve as you want. They have multiple flavors right now on our ship. We've got mango, chocolate, vanilla, banana, and strawberry. Uh, and of course you can do swirls. And to demonstrate this, Cassie and I are going to have a cone competition. I don't think that's fair. I think it's perfectly I think you know fair. I think going to win. It could be you. In what, in what world, on what cruise ship? Can I start over? <laughs> I think this might be my worst <laughs> cone ever. It's really good. <laughs> it's because you're right. nervous. There's one. <laughs> this side looks real. Mine kind of has, it's like the artistic stylings of some Disney concept art. It does kind of have that vibe, yeah. You, did you see the other side? It's really, it's really interesting. It's kind of like a hidden Donald, like a hat. <laughs> oh, it's a hidden you, Donald. Okay, um, and my cone, that doesn't count again. No, that doesn't, it doesn't, it okay. doesn't. Um, you're actually mango? No, I want the swirl. How different. She's been in a, in a mango movie. This might be the best one I've this ever done. This your perfect, like the most perfect cone you've ever made. It looks like it's fake. I really want to shove it in your face. Let us know in the comments who won. Don't, don't bother, okay? We don't, just, just get it, actually exit out of this video. I think you've seen everything you need to see. Someone feels really proud of her cone. I just I caught am. her taking a photo of it. It's so pretty. We get it, you're multi-talented, okay? All right, hey MTV, welcome to our cruise ship. Yeah, let's go check out the room. Check out our room. Lovely Cinderella touches. Our keys were here. If you're curious, when you come to your room, you're gonna find the keys right there. Um, our luggage was not here yet. But it will be. But it will be. <laughs> where you're gonna put your key. This is gonna turn on all of the lights in the room. So if you don't have your key in here, and you're like, why won't the lights turn on? It's because your key needs to be in there. Okay. Next up, toilet and sink. She's there. <laughs> here is where you're gonna find the closet. Robes are gonna be in here, your safe, your laundry bags, any of your safety gear that you might need. Lots of storage Thanks. space. The shower slash tub and mirror, and also me and Fry. Yes. And also new yeah soap products, makeup towel, little towels, soap. There's a link full link mirror, which I know is actually very important to a lot of people. So, so link mirror. Here. You can see us do this. Our lovely TV. Um, Disney thinks we are valued guests. One bed here. We've got a really pretty a frozen mural. We've got one lamp here. We've got a little light that you can turn on with the lamp. And then a little reading light. Obviously, we've got some decorations in here. <laughs> this is something you can add on before you ever hop on board if you want to surprise your family or even just a little something for yourself. You can do little packages. Also, very quickly, we are going to note there is ample under storage bed space. So that's always nice to have. Um, unpack your suitcase, throw it in there. Couch. It's, the couch. it's also a bed, which I can actually do this. Part. Can, oh, you got it? I think I got it. Okay. Dun dun dun. dun. Couch, couch bed. bed. And they will do that for you um, every night. You do not have to do that. It is just easy if you want to. Got a nice dresser situation. Dresser area. So here we are. We're in the dresser and the vanity. Mm. Mm. And. Mm. In the drawer, you've got um, room service menus and phone numbers, and I've got a little bit of stationery and some postcards. More drawers, hair dryer up here. Well, where's the fridge? This is the fridge. Da -da 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 -da. And then more plugs, also kind of tucked here in the side. Balcony. Oh, it's so bright outside. Look at that view. Look at that beautiful view. It's amazing. There's two lovely chairs, a little table here in the middle for a nice morning coffee relaxation spot, a late night drink. You 
can also get Mickey bars, which we did on our last pre-scavenger hunt. So if you want to go watch that, it's up on the channel now. Lots of fun stuff mm. that you can do out here. There's The world is your oyster. It really is. And this is where you come to live it. Look at this beautiful view. I hope we find a pearl. You are the pearl. Now it wouldn't be a Disney cruise without Disney movies. And the best place to watch movies, well, one of the places to watch movies, is on Funnel Vision. Funnel Vision is the huge screen literally on the funnel. Toy Story 3 is on, and you can see that you can watch it from in the pool, you can watch it from on the deck, in the chairs, uh, you can watch it from upper decks, watch it while you're in line for the aqua duck. Uh, they run pretty much all day, and the films that are running is shown in your navigator app, so you can just check out Funnel Vision at any time. But that's not the only place to watch movies. You can also watch movies on your cruise ship. So a lot of the times, Disney cruise ships will have theaters in them, and you can watch movies even before they come out on theater. On theater? Are you on kidding? Theater. We better get in there. Now we're gonna act out the Little Mermaid. I hate being a fish. Daddy, I love him. <laughs> A major, major must do on your Disney cruise is to check out the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app. This is an app that you can find in the App Store or the Google Play Store, and you can download it ahead of your voyage. There are a few things you can do ahead of your trip to go ahead and get, get all set. You can order things for your stateroom in the app. You can set up port adventures or onboard fun, some of them, some you have to wait. And so you can kind of like click around, kind of get an idea of what's coming, make sure that everything is all set for your voyage. And then as soon as you hit the port, as soon as you get on that Disney Cruise Line Wi-Fi, the navigator totally opens up, becomes your onboard guide to everything that you're gonna be doing. It has your dinner times, what the attire is for dinner. It has the shows every day. It has all live entertainment, every single cruise activity, what time sunrise and sunset is. There's cruise chat so you can talk to your family. It is a must, must, must have if you have a smartphone on a Disney cruise. We have used it more than anything else on the ship probably. There's nothing worse than whenever you get off the ship and they take it all away from you on the app. It like hurts. It goes away. You only see those activities when you're on the ship. It's not like the Disney World app where you can like look at wait times when you're at home being a loser. It's gone. We are both really um, intense planners and we struggle a lot with the fact that the navigator does not fully open up ahead of uh, being at port. I want to know that there's bingo at four o'clock, six months in advance. I also want that. And that cruise chat is also where you can get messages from guest services. For instance, we were in our room really late yesterday and housekeeping saw that we were in here so they didn't come and clean our room. And they just let us know that if we wanted housekeeping, we could just call zero on our on our stateroom phone. Um, and they just let us that let us know that in chat. So it was super easy for us to like get that update. So definitely the Navigator app is an absolute must do. Maybe the biggest, speaking of housekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> gotta get to the pools. <laughs> gotta get to the pools. Another must do. Hang out at the pools. It's pretty relaxing. Who's feeling it? Are you sure? <laughs> Another Disney must do. You have to come to the pool. Yes. It's one of the best parts, and you can watch Disney movies while you're here. <laughs> A very fun must do that you will encounter on the very first day of your cruise is the Sail Away Party! The Sail Away Party takes place here on deck 11 on this ship, here on the stage, on the funnel stage. It has Disney characters and the entertainment team will welcome you aboard and sort of do a little celebration of Sail Away. And then as soon as the party ends, the ship starts moving. You get to hear that big beautiful horn. Yeah, they play the famous Disney Cruise Line horn that plays When You Wish Upon a Star. So that is definitely a must do. Or skip the sail away party. I've made it over to the front of the boat because I want to be at the very front while we first take off and sail away. Way better than the sailor party. Way better. 
the next must do is to check out the kids spaces on the ship. There are a ton of kids spaces geared for different age groups. The two biggest ones are Oceaneers Club and Oceaneers Lab, which are for kids from ages 3 to 12 and have a bunch of interactive experiences like Andy's Toy Room, a Magic Play Floor, Millennium Falcon. If you've got kids under 3, they can go to the It's a Small World Nursery on this ship. Um, and then there's Edge and Vibe, which are the tween and teen clubs. So lots of really cool spaces for kiddos. Um, and they're absolutely a must do if you are a kid. We've been talking a lot about how both of us didn't like super, like, we were both kind of shy. We were shyer and not as into the- So we didn't go on them whenever we were kids. And now the FOMO that we have, we just passed by, they're playing Wii Sports. Mm -hmm. Hannah Montana's blasting and yeah. I'm just like, I want to be there. So I fast. I went as a kid, but I was a hater because I didn't get to be with my brother because he was a different age group, which is yeah. something to consider, but also as a kiddo I should have I should have made some friends. The thing is you do not have to be a kid to experience these spaces, and we would certainly consider a must to check them out as an adult. Every single day of our sailing and most sailings, there's an open house at each of the kids' areas. We've been checking them out, which we were just doing for coverage, but it's so fun. We played on the magic the magic play floor, yep. and it was so, so fun. We did a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Nobody was in there when we went, and they were like, we were just taking pictures and stuff, and she was like, do you guys want to like play a game on the floor? And we were like, do yes. We? It made us feel like little kids again. It's so interactive in there. It's some of the coolest tech on the ship is in the kids clubs. And that's doubly true for the Wish with the newer tech. So kids clubs are absolutely a must do. You can check the navigator for those open house times. Um, and if, if you're if a kid. Your kid is, if your kid's shy, those open house times are a good time to kind of just like dip their toes in. Cause you'll be there and you'll be like, hey, see, it's not so bad. Look, yeah, so definitely kids clubs are a must do. Another thing that you can do on Disney Cruises is play an interactive game. And for us here on The Wish, there's actually a new game inside your Navigator app, and it is called Disney Uncharted Adventure. So let's go ahead and try it out. Now as we're waiting for things to get started, we do have to create our Disney me. So we're making a baby fry bucket, which I think is a lot of fun. All right, Emma, we've got to go to deck two, aft elevator landing, because we have to find the wishing star, or a piece of the wishing star, not even it's the whole separated. wishing star. Well, that's the storyline. It's been separated. All right. We've not said that yet. So let's go find it. Okay, we've made it. We are at the aft elevators, I believe. Or are we at mid? <gasps> shooting star fell, the winds have been kind of restless. But one thing winds are great for is sailing. So I thought I'd try to find that star. I saw it fall toward the entrance to Lalothai. Wanna come with me? Sure. Tilt your device left and <gasps> oh. right to move from side <laughs> to side. Pull it up on your phone, have a fun time. I would recommend doing it. A time like now, it's 11 o'clock at night when nobody else is around. Um, but there's a lot of these paintings on the walls that kind of give you an idea about where things might be. But it's a super fun way to do something new and different and um, honestly helps you learn the ship really well. So, And there are a lot of activities for kiddos, but this is another one that you guys can do together if you don't want to drop them off at the Oceaneers Club or something like that. And you guys want to have a fun experience where they can kind of burn a little energy, I think this is a great one. Yeah, and they can lead it and they can do something on their phone and they think it's fun and you're also going to think it's fun. So I would recommend it. Our next must do is one that you probably want to do as early on your cruise as possible, but it might take you the entire length of your cruise. And you know what? That's okay. Did we get lost immediately before filming this clip? No. What are you talking about? That never, that never happened. Hey, stop. Stop nodding. Stop it. So our next must do is to explore the ship and get familiar with the directions. Oh, it's just a ship. How big can it actually be? It's huge. It's massive. It's pretty big. It's um, pretty easy to get around, but you kind of have to get the hang of it first. And exploring the ship can be really fun. You'll see tons of beautiful art that you might not see otherwise because it might not be a part of the ship that you were planning on going to. Um, but the big thing is to get familiar with directions, specifically what the different ship word means. And so here's a little crash course. 
aft is the back of the ship. Mid, middle, forward, front of the ship. Something to note is that not all of the decks go all the way across. So if you're here and you want to get here, you might not be able to do that, especially if you're up on the higher decks. Um, the other big words to know is port side and starboard side. Port side is going to be the left side of the ship if you're facing forward. Starboard side is going to be the right. And as you can see, everything's pretty simple because it's got arrows and the maps do face the right direction of the ship. So like forward is that way and aft is that way, but you might get lost still. On a Disney cruise, you do have rotational dining, which is super, super cool. Here on The Wish, we've got Worlds of Marvel, we've got Frozen, Arendelle Adventure, and 1923. So three super fun restaurants. Your servers all stay with you, so it's the same wait staff at each restaurant, but it's a new restaurant each night, so it's super fun, super exciting. Love the theming and atmosphere of Worlds of Marvel. We just had a wonderful dinner, um, but we've got two more to check out on this cruise. <laughs> we are outside of D Lounge, which is one of the main like onboard event venues, um, and our next to is one that we really took seriously on our first day here, which is to raffle it up. Specifically on the first day, there are a ton of raffles. The spa has a raffle. You can find it in your Navigator app where you can win spa treatments for your cruise. Massages, um, facials, uh, uh, foot analysis. Haircuts, all sorts well, those are of mostly complimentary. The feet analysis. Um, you can also go to some of the fancier merchandise locations like Diamonds and Wishes, which actually sells diamond jewelry for raffles to win actual diamonds on your first day. And it's free to enter most of these raffles, so you can just go and try to win. Did we? No. No. We did try. We tried really, 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 hard. really hard to win. We're just not very good at raffles, I guess. I guess we're just not very lucky. The other um, kind of similar thing is bingo, which yeah. is a very big thing Win on most cruise ships. For this, you do have to buy in. So the cheapest buy in was a pack of three paper or four paper cards for $25 um, on the game that we played. Then it's bingo. You play bingo. And on our ship right now, the grand prize is $10,000 at bingo today. I'm feeling sad that you brought up bingo because bingo didn't go very well for us. Bingo did not go what I would say well for us. But we now. had fun yelling shake it up, Betty. We did. It's a it's a very fun even I would say play bingo once if you are like willing to spend just a little on it. It's very fun to play even if you don't win. If um, you know shake it up, but if you know shake it up, Betty, comment shake it up, Betty. Yeah, comment shake it up, Betty, because Betty needed to shake it up. Betty needed to shake it up. Another must <laughs> is going to the spa. And we brought our own sheet mask. We did. <laughs> Go to the spa. <laughs> She's not on camera. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> and she is the winner. She won. So go check out the raffle. Our next let's do is to get active. And you might be surprised by how much opportunity there is to do that. Here on the Disney Fantasy, we do have Goofy's sports deck, which has basketball, it has mini golf. Uh, there's even a sports simulator. Lots of really fun stuff going on up here. Uh, Kelsey and I did shoot some hoops. It went poorly. Um, we also played like a round of mini golf. It also went relatively poorly. Um, it's that kind of stuff into your speed. They also have shuffleboard on the lower decks. And there's a full fitness center in Sense of Spa with fitness classes. Some of those are complimentary, some of those come with a nominal fee. You can check those out in your navigator app to see if one of them might be something you want to do. And then beyond that, even when you're on Castaway Key, Disney's Premium Island, there's a lot of chances to get active, like a 5K run, biking around the island, and snorkeling. Now, I am not a particularly active vacationer. I don't tend to go to the gym when I'm on vacation. I don't like to go for a run. However, I do find myself getting active on the Disney Cruise. Some of the sports events are really, really fun. On the Wish, they have Hero Zone, which is a whole active space for families to have fun together. 
Um, and I really enjoy the active activities on Castaway Key. So there's something for everybody. I think it's a must-do to get active one way or another. Another one of those Disney Cruise Line must-dos is gonna be explore the ports. Depending on what ship you're on, you're gonna go to different experiences, have different adventures. For us, we are here in Nassau, and actually, we are exploring the ports. Exploring the ports is so exciting. There are so many fun things, especially if this is your first time traveling, or if this is your first Disney cruise, there's a lot of things to do. But if you're anything like us, this is also a great day to stay on the ship and explore it with a lot less crowds and have more of those on ship excursions like we'd like to do in the you know spa and things like that you can also book excursions through Disney and also not through Disney most of the time we do recommend booking those through Disney though just to make sure you get back on the ship in time so that you don't have to worry about anything like that yeah, that way Disney knows if you're here or not which is kind of important yes you know there are mermaids over there there's mermaids right here babe I know but I'm used to that don't forget to have fun on Castaway Key. For most Caribbean sailings, you will be stopping at Disney's private island. This is Castaway Key. It's a really fun island that has a variety of beaches. There's food. There's even excursions like playing with stingrays or going on a banana boat. It's absolutely a must do to have some fun on Castaway Key. We have a perfect day on Disney's private island video coming to the channel. Another must do, which is consider an onboard fun experience. Now there are some upcharge experiences while you are on board, mostly those come down to tastings so they have a lot of different alcohol tastings mojitos margaritas the one that we did on this voyage was the uh, mixology class where we actually learned how to make our own like rum cocktails it was very fun and the favorite thing that uh, the favorite that Cassie and I ever did is we did the chocolate and liqueur tasting which we did not expect to love as much as we did but we did that on the dream last year and it was so fun these are definitely a must-do for me and the tastings they're worth the splurge uh, typically they're around 40 to 50 ish dollars depending on what you do and they actually do even have a non-alcoholic one with the kickstart your day at the census juice bar where you can learn to make a bunch of juices now most food and drink is included on your disney cruise but there are some specialty food and beverages that cost a little extra and we do think it's worth the price to splurge at least once on a specialty drink now this could be an alcoholic beverage alcohol is not included so it could be the wine package beer package it could be a special cocktail in one of the lounges anything like that it does not have to be alcohol though there are also specialty drinks like smoothies and even coffees that you can get cove cafe which is the adults only coffee bar on the fantasy was one of cassie and i's daily stops so that we could get the speculoos latte which was absolutely delicious it was like a fall specialty that's not important but definitely get a specialty drink i'm sure there will be something to your taste there's something for everybody just remember it's got to be budgeted in another thing you must do on a disney cruise this is part of um, a lot of our perfect days in magic kingdom you can do it here on a cruise as well and that is to get pixie dusted yeah. and then close your eyes all the way against your forehead permit to make a wish bippity boppity boo may all your dreams and your wishes come true bippity boppity boo all right, so just like the parks in Disney World, you can get pixie dusted here at the Baby Bobby Boutique. Just ask the cast members, they are very happy to do it, and it just makes you feel special, and it probably won't come out for a week, but that's okay. It's all about the magic, friends. It is. Not about how many times you need to wash your hair to get the tiles of glitter out. Now, our next must-do is a snap a photo with your favorite character. You can see when the characters meet on your Navigator app. So the character meet and greets on Disney Cruise Line typically have much, much shorter lines than you'll find in Disney World. Unless you're on a specialty cruise like Halloween on the High Seas, where they'll have special characters like Jack and Sally or the Sanderson sisters, those kinds of meet and greets will have a bit of a longer, longer, longer line than you'll find for like Pluto or Chip and Dale or Captain Hook. I line up around 10 to 15 minutes before your character begins meeting um, the app will give you a notification 15 minutes prior and it goes by really really fast they also have opportunities to meet multiple characters at once so like they'll have um, multiple princesses in just one line which is super super amazing it's also pretty intimate because sometimes the characters might recognize you we met Donald multiple multiple times so we've kind of had some special meet and greets and anyways, they have really, really cute costumes too. So you'll find their pirate attire, you'll find their formal night attire and their cruise attire. So that's super fun. Hi Pluto, I'm so excited to meet you. You know, I used to have a puppy too and I miss her so much. So meeting you is a lot to me. I love your cruise off. Oh, are you ready to take a picture? 
next must do, consider an adults only meal. I hope you're hungry. It's not a must do to do one because they can get pricey and the food on the ship is pretty awesome when you consider like all the included options. So why splurge? But the answer is because you might want to splurge. So at least think about it. There are adults only options on every ship. On the Fantasy, that is Palo and uh, Remy. And on the Wish, it is Palo Steakhouse and Enchante. I have been to all these spots. They're all amazing. So it's worth considering if you want something of a romantic time or just a little bit of a break from the kids or just a slightly elevated meal as a part of your vacation. Our next stop is Sweet on You. Now this is the sweet shop here on the Disney Fantasy, but all of the Disney ships have a specialty treat shop. Sure, you can get those desserts at the buffet and you can get that unlimited soft serve, but if you want some really special treats, you're gonna wanna head into the sweet shop and you're gonna have to spend a little bit of money. But I think at least once during your trip, it's worth it to grab something a little extra fun or maybe seasonal, like that Suki Unicorn Vanilla Gelato. Um, they have gelato and ice cream. They've got really fun toppings for for it and then they have rice krispies and cupcakes and macarons um i am gonna get a little sweet treat because i haven't yet and i don't know that i'll have a chance to this is our second to last day um it's a must do so i must do it all right the next must do is that you must try to win a prize yeah, you there have to are so many opportunities to win prizes win games win activities mm -hmm. win trivia all that kind of stuff on every single disney cruise ship mm -hmm. so we've kind of stumbled into luna mm -hmm. and we're gonna do some disney movie quotes trivia which I think we're I think gonna be good. <laughs> Let's be honest. This is our job. If you start singing, <laughs> I'm going to throw up. <laughs> that was actually said by me at work. Oh, would you like a hint? All of us. <laughs> Dear, this whole romance that but you've invented throwing me off. just proves you're too naive to be here. Why, Why would he, he like you? Dangled. That makes Guess her the best. The I deserve the best. Right, we stayed in movie trivia for way too long. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was fun, Today but is a there's so many other must-dos that we have to keep going. So our next must-do, you have to stand up straight, that's fine. So our next must-do is to chat with a cast member. Now, Disney Cruise Line cast members take things kind of to the next level. Mm -hmm. They really, really, really have so much to share. They're so passionate about sharing their cultures, their histories, their stories, and they're so much fun to talk to. Yeah, we have literally been like chatting up with like all the customers that we can, and it's hard not to because they are so friendly. But even if you're like, I'm just, yeah, I'm just here for a listen, I'm just here for a drink. You're get your chat, but you're chat in a good way. It's not like a bad way. It's so so fun. So we're gonna go see if we can find Tony. Yeah, Tony. We talk to Tony literally every day. So this is our friend Tony. He's been taking such great care of us. Okay. Another thing you have to do when you're on the Disney Cruise Line is honestly find your favorite lounge. And the Wish has a lot that we really like. Yes. But Hyperspace Lounge, the Star Wars themed one, feels very special to me. Feels like a favorite. Um, our first stop on this cruise. Best stop, as that might say. Okay. I agree. We already have our beverages. My little ears. So it's fun. I think we made the right choice. Now I, originating from Batu, went with the cocktail from Batu. This is the Spire Sunset. Main flavor here is lychee, which I think Quincy would be proud of me. She would love this. There's also some coconut in here as well. Very nice, very refreshing, very light. Mine is called the Golden One and it's from the Moon the Vendor. It has like a orange creamsicle vibe, but it's very, very, very fruity and frankly, right up my alley. Again, there are a lot of lounges here on the Wish specifically, just like with every ship. I will say the Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge is very popular, so we made sure to come here on day one just to make sure we got in. Had no problem, but it is in between dinner time and a show right now, so that might be a good time to check out a lounge. Next up, we are heading into Cove Cafe. This is the adults only coffee shop on board the Fantasy. They have the same location on the Dream. Adults only coffee shops in general. But this is my favorite place to grab coffee on the ship. There are specialty coffees. Um, you do get complimentary like hot Joffrey's coffee at the uh, buffet and at the beverage stations. But this is going to be your spot as well as Vista Cafe, some of the other cafes on board to grab any alcoholic coffee beverages or mochas. 
um, anything specialty, if you have like Starbucks lattes and stuff like that, you're going to want to head to one of the onboard coffee shops. It is an extra fee, but there is a super fun thing where you get a little coffee card and for every coffee that you purchase, um, when you get to five, your next one is free, which, uh, we hit within like the first three days of the cruise by sharing a card. So a uh, pretty good deal. Coffees have been really amazing too right now because it's a fall cruise. They do have a latte called the Speculoos Latte, with the, which tastes like those little cookies. And it is so, so good. And we've been having a lot of those cookie lattes. If you're on a Disney cruise and you're not dressing up, I promise you are missing out on a ton of the fun. Yes. We are dressed up right now for pirate night. And honestly, a huge majority of the ship is too. And it's so fun. And there's a deck party, which we'll talk about in a little while. Mm -hmm. But there's just so much to experience. And it's part of the fun of a Disney cruise. It's like getting to dress up and participate in the themed nights. And each Disney cruise ship is different. So right now we are on a Halloween cruise. So tomorrow night will be Halloween themed. People are going to be in their Halloween costumes. We've got Marvel Day at Sea. We've got Pixar Day at Sea. There's so many opportunities to dress up. But I will say Pirate Night has been around the longest. It's also the one that most people dress up for. I know that when we did the Dream in March, more people dressed up for Pirate Night than Marvel Day at Sea. So Pirate Night, tried and true. It's awesome. Join in on the fun. Back in the tube, mate, because our next point is karaoke, baby. So um, if you are very confident or you just want to maybe embarrass yourself a little, they have a karaoke throughout the cruise ship. You'll find karaoke on the Navigator app for multiple age groups. They'll have karaoke in the teen and kids clubs. They'll have family karaoke in the D lounge and a crazy karaoke for grown-ups in the tube. And sometimes you don't even need to go to karaoke to embarrass yourself. Sometimes you just need to watch a video of you talking about karaoke. <laughs> Another thing on your Disney cruise is you need to make sure that you're hitting up those deck parties. They have lots of them. There's tons of different themes tonight. We went to the Pirates one and it's a lot of fun and honestly the kids really get into it and it's so much fun to just watch them too. Deck parties do happen out on the pool deck um, on the Wish it's deck 11 and deck 12. They are wonderful performances on the stage with actual live performers that you see in the shows each night. They come out and have a deck party. Tonight was pirate themed so we saw Jack Sparrow. We saw Captain Red from Pirates of the Caribbean which is super rare. You don't ever get to see that except for here on the cruise ships. So it's super fun. It's a great performance. Everyone is very talented. Also, a big thing about Disney Cruise Line specifically is they're the only cruise line that shoots off fireworks from their cruise ships. So Disney icing on top, fireworks just like in the parks. They also have it here on the cruise ships. And you really can't miss this one. Disney is iconic for their fireworks at sea. So our fireworks on the Disney Fantasy happen the same night as Pirate Night, which was also our experience on the Disney Dream. They will shoot off fireworks over the ocean. It is so beautiful. Now, Disney recently introduced Magic Land Plus to open up your stateroom, do your purchases, and it will interact with fireworks too. So if you have that Magic Land, make sure to wear it. So they will shoot off from the funnels by the funnel vision and they shoot off in this direction. So in my opinion, it's best to be on that side of the ship so you can get the best view. But we were standing right over there and our view was kind of obscured by the slide, but we could still see them. So it gets very crowded for the fireworks, but you'll probably get a good view regardless of where you are. Well, never mind. Listen to my advice. Stand over there. Splash down. Obviously, a very important one is Splashdown. Uh, this is our word for riding the specialty slide on the cruise ship. Pretty much every Disney cruise ship has a really amazing slide. On the Fantasy and the Dream, you'll see the Aqua Duck. On the Wish, you'll see the Aqua Mouse. The Aqua Duck is a really fun, super long slide where you just kind of cruise along out over the side of the ship, over the ocean, and around all of the top decks. The Aqua Mouse is similar, except it's the first attraction at sea, so it actually has show scene elements that tell a Mickey and Minnie cartoon story. To avoid a long line during these attractions, we recommend going first thing in the morning right when they open, or later in the evening during the dinner and show services, or on port days when other people are at port. Of course, that only works if you don't go on to port, but the ship will be pretty empty. I'm failing miserably at this very big must-do, which is very important to me. Sunscreen. Why did I forget to put it on this morning? Now, luckily, I have not burned, but a must-do, put on sunscreen, folks. Even if you don't burn, I know a lot of people tan, and obviously you wanna get a, can a tan when you're out on a cruise for the summer, but uh, the sun's really damaging to your skin. UV rays are really damaging, and in this part of the world, UV rays are very, very strong um, and extra damaging, so, 
put on your sunscreen. Um, this is Cassie's, but it's uh, 50 SPF coconut. It smells really good. Oh, it smells better than my sunscreen. Um, put, it, put it on because you don't want to end up with any sort of serious damage to your skin or much worse cancer. So wear your sunscreen. Make sure those kiddos lather up. Um, my general rule is to do a very full application in the morning and then reapply every hour that I'm out in the sun, especially, especially if I'm in the water. I'll also say that there have been a couple of times on the ship where I'm like, ah, I'm not going to be outside. I don't want sunscreen. And then I'm out standing in the sun for a long period of time because I get distracted watching like, you know, Peter Pan on Funnel Vision. So it's just better to have it than not. Um, also, this is a personal preference thing, but I am a big proponent of using cream sunscreens over spray. And that's because um, I know that I am getting everywhere on me when I use cream sunscreen. And with spray, I just feel like it's impossible not to miss a spot, I always miss a spot. When I miss a spot, I burn in really crazy patterns. You can buy sunscreen at the shops on board and talk about sunscreen for a while. Um, but I have to keep talking because I still have sunscreen on my hands. That's better. Next up on our list is see a Broadway style show. This is one of my favorite parts of cruising with Disney is that they have Broadway style shows, obviously telling some of your favorite Disney stories and some new stories as well. On our cruise on the fantasy, we saw Aladdin and Frozen and then also got to see Disney's Believe, which is a very sweet father daughter story that makes us cry a lot. These shows are absolutely amazing. They have Broadway level performers, sets, costumes, the whole shebang, and they're on the shorter side. They're only about an hour, so they actually keep the attention of younger guests as well as people who just might not want to spend multiple hours of their cruise watching a show. Okay, have you been saving up those allowances? Our next must do is shopping on board on the Disney Cruise. Every single ship has multiple shopping options. So right now we're kind of in the shopping district. And here's where you can pick up your souvenirs. We have diamonds and wishes with some more luxury goods like jewelry, sea treasures where you're going to find a lot of cruise themed merchandise, including the anniversary collection right now. And Mickey's main sale, a lot of character stuff and Halloween on the high seas merchandise. So make sure to pick up all of those souvenirs that you need to pick up for someone else. Like my mom wanted two keychains, so I got her her two keychains. And there are some items that you will not find on Shop Disney. So make sure to snag the things that you want to snag because some of those things are exclusive to not only Disney Cruise Line, but your ship. So grab those souvenirs. Like, do I need this lounge fly? Probably not, but. One of my favorite absolute must do's is actually ordering room service on your Disney cruise. And a lot of those items are complimentary. And so of course we had to start out with breakfast. So to be able to order room service for breakfast, you're gonna find one of these hanging door cards and it's gonna let you choose basically all of your continental breakfast items and when you want it to be delivered to your room the next day. Now this does need to be hanging out before 3 a.m. Um, the day that you want it, but we, went ahead and got a little bit of everything. We got some fruit, some pastries, some coffee, and even some cereal. And now this is not gonna be as big as the buffet for breakfast. However, it is a lot more convenient because we're in our pajamas and can enjoy it. Good morning. If you can't tell, I just woke up. Let's have a little muffin. This is your typical little chocolate chip muffin. Um, chocolate chips are more on top, not necessarily in the muffin, but this is a great breakfast because I'm just out looking at the ocean and it's beautiful. And it's very relaxing. And we I, didn't have to get dressed. And we didn't have to get dressed. Emma's still in her Grogu Christmas pajama pants. Exactly. So get room service. My favorite must do on this list, perhaps one of my favorites, got a couple favorites, but one of my favorites is certainly this one. A must do is to sit, relax, and look out at the ocean. One thing about a cruise ship is that there's pretty much infinite ocean views. Maybe you have one from your room, whether you have uh, the virtual portable or an exterior portable or a veranda or a concierge room. Maybe you have a view like this, um, which means you could sit and look from your room or you can sit and relax on one of the upper decks. There are tons of chairs facing the ocean specifically for this reason, so that you can sit and stare at it. And you have to, you must. This is literally my favorite part of a cruise. Even on some of our more busy work cruises, I have sat in the middle of the night and looked into the pitch blackness of the ocean just because I wanted to, because I love it so much. Listen to the sound. Look at those birds. 
It's amazing. What, are those, what, do, what kind of birds do you think those are? Another thing that is really big on Disney Cruise Line, especially on all of the ships, is decorating your door. So a lot of people will decorate their doors just to um, have a little bit of that Disney magic, Disney feel, make friends with people. So let's go check out some doors. <laughs> Check out the live music. So you can find live performances all over the ship. Just check that Navigator app and it'll tell you show times. Um, you can see there's a grand piano down there in the atrium. So there's often performances right before dinner. You'll find them in the lounges, especially those adult lounges. And it's honestly really nice to just sit and listen. Um, that has been one of Quincy and I's favorite things to do. No joke, one of our favorite things to do. We open up that Navigator app and we look for our favorite performers and then we just go sit and chill and relax. Now, no matter what cruise line you're on, it is all about the food. So we are gonna focus a little bit now on grabbing and go a bite to eat. So aside from the rotational dining for dinner, aside from Cabana's, which is the buffet inside, you also, at least on the Wish, have Festival of Foods, which is the grab and go quick service kind of situation outside on the pool deck. So we stopped by, um, got some lunch, and we're gonna have a nice little lunch moment outside. Beautiful day, we're in the Bahamas. Life is good. Life is good. So I stopped by two different booths for lunch today. I grabbed a cheeseburger from one location and then I also went to the barbecue uh, window. No surprise, I can't walk past brisket and not get it. So I got some brisket and some baked mac and cheese. Cheeseburger with everything, oh. french fries and macaroni salad. Yum. And so far all of it's been amazing because I can't resist eating. Mm -hmm. Festival of Foods here on The Wish is one of those great options for when you've been outside at the pool deck all day, you've been on the beach, and you just need that good cheeseburger or french fries or that good, just cool meal. It's not gonna be the best cheeseburger you've ever had, but it comforts the soul. And that's all you need. Mm -hmm. This next must do is to consider whether booking your next cruise while on board is right for you. Now, this is obviously not something that I recommend for everybody. For a lot of people, a Disney cruise with how expensive it is is a once in a lifetime trip. And for a lot of people, it might be a long time until you can afford it again. So this is not for everybody, but if you're on the ship, you know that next year you're gonna wanna do this again. In two years, then consider booking on the ship because there is a discount. There is an onboard only offer where you can get 10% discount off of the rates of a Disney cruise. Um, they even have reduced deposit on seven night sailings or longer. It's only available while you're on board. So of course this is only something to do if you know you're gonna book, but if it's the kind of thing where you cruise every year and you know that you're gonna wanna cruise next year, then you don't wanna miss out on a discount just because you stepped off the ship. So definitely something to at least consider. The must do is to see if it's right for you. If it's not, it's not. I know for me it wouldn't be, so. This one isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea, but hear me out. You should go dancing when you're on a Disney cruise. There are a lot of opportunities to dance, whether it's like a silent disco or a dance party in the adults only area, but there's also the dance parties that are actually in the atrium and on the deck. These dance parties are awesome. They oftentimes have the characters there. There was even one on Castaway Key during our cruise with all of the characters. They're short, it's a great time to interact with the characters, and it's absolutely amazing for kiddos. Now, when you're enjoying that rotational dining, it is an absolute must-do to get to know your serving team. So a hallmark of that rotational dining is that your serving team does follow you from restaurant to restaurant. We are with the lovely Thomas as our main server, and then we've got Yachty as our assistant server. But getting to know your serving team is really awesome. They'll do magic tricks for you. Um, I know that my family, like we still talk about our server to this day, and I think I was like eight when we went on a Disney cruise, maybe 10. So that's like almost decades later that we still talk about our Disney Cruise Line server. So they are 
really, really spectacular. You really get to know them over your cruise. They make it easy, because if you get a Diet Coke at dinner every night, they're just gonna bring you that Diet Coke. And they start to know your taste and know your recommendations. Like, Thomas is like, you like seafood, this is what you need to get. So, it's just really awesome. Another absolute must do when you are on your Disney cruise is taking a midnight walk. Yes. And we've been here for a while. Mm -hmm. And it feels like the perfect time. Yes, I love a midnight walk. When you are the only one for being quiet out and about on the ship, it's your own little paradise. Serenity. You can pretend you're alone. Yeah. That's so, fine. what if we do? So for us, we love walking outside in particular because you can kind of see, but at the same time, you can't see, you can't see anything. And <laughs> it's, it's just kind of so scary. cool. Just don't think about it for too long. Yeah, and you can don't look over the edge and don't hold the camera over the edge, Emma. I'm doing everything you just said not to do, but it is a lot of fun. And honestly, it's just really cool to see how fast you're traveling in a safe way that doesn't stress me out. And also the moon. This is kind of a necessity, especially if you're overwhelmed after the first day when you're with a lot of people and you've kind of been heard around a little bit like cattle. This is just a nice way to take a deep breath. There is nothing better than a sunrise or sunset at sea. Either hop up early and watch that sunrise from the top decks or step out to watch sunset. And when you're on a Disney cruise, you should make a friend. Cruises are really different from a standard Disney vacation or a vacation in general. And that's because you're cruising on a ship with all the same people the whole time. It's a lot of people, you're not gonna be seeing the same faces over and over, but you do have the opportunity to make friends in a way that you don't typically on a vacation. Now, whether that is your dining team who you see every night at the dinners, or whether it is a fellow passenger who sits next to you at a mixology class. Cassie and I were really having a good time joking along with the guy sitting with us at our mixology class. It's just really nice to be able to make friends with the cast members, with the other guests, and just have like a fun social time as well. And our final must do is to make some memories. The most important part of any family vacation, but a Disney cruise does a pretty, pretty good job about it. A pretty, pretty, pretty good job. <laughs> oh my God. Our number one must do of the whole list and our final must do is going to be to make some memories. Now, that's the point of any family vacation, but it's very easy and you have some very magical ones on the Disney Cruise Line. So that is what you should be trying to do. Some of my most treasured Disney memories were on a Disney cruise ship. So if you have a Disney cruise coming up, drop your countdown because we want to get excited with you. Yes, I have only ever done one not for work Disney cruise with my family. I was young. I was like eight to ten-ish and to ten -ish. I remember so much about it. I literally tell Cassie stories from it like the whole time we've been on board. I'm like, oh my gosh, on my Disney cruise, like when I was a little kid, it was just a really magical vacation for me and a really like, there's a lot of really formative memories from that. And I was really young and my brother was really young and we remember like a lot of it. So it was just a very magical thing. Memories are the most important part. Memories with your kids, your kids' memories, your memories. That's the most important part of a vacation. I did some pretty embarrassing things as a kid on a Disney cruise. And even to this day, they She's are these doing story? embarrassing no, things on a Disney cruise. No, that's not what I was going to say. Those are the... <laughs> Those are the stories my family still tells in my adulthood. I don't think I've had any other experiences other than those, at least not, not according to them. I can think of a lot of embarrassing Cassie stories. I really want to talk about like the this one man, time. There was like... a. <laughs> Tell it. No, I don't have anything. I was hoping you were going to cut me off comically. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> if you like this video, like and subscribe. And now go watch our perfect day on the Disney Fantasy. We'll, we'll see, see you there. there. This time we really will. Yeah. <laughs>